Hi everyone, let's talk about Schur's inequality. What it states is that for all t in the non-negative integers and for all x, y, and z in the non-negative reals, it holds that x to the power of t times x minus y times x minus z plus y to the power of t times y minus z y minus x plus z to the power of t plus times z minus x z minus y is non-negative. So basically greater than or equal to zero. Now you might be wondering why we would bother to prove this esoteric inequality and the reason it is that it has interesting special cases. So let me show you some of these special cases. The first one is for t equals to zero. If you expand it out what you get is that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is greater than or equal to xy plus yz plus zx. And this is provable from the AMGM inequality as well, and it holds for all real x, y, z. But uh, it's also a consequence of Schur's inequality. And something that I should mention is that we said here that the x, y, and z have to be in the non-negative reals. But if t is an even positive, well, non-negative, non-negative integer, then x, y, z can be any real numbers. But we won't be proving it in that case. So let's look at some more special cases. t equals to 1 can be written as, in a factored form, x, y, z is greater than or equal to negative x plus y plus z times x minus y plus z times x plus y minus z. So that's quite interesting. For t equals to 1, we can also write it as x over y plus z plus y over z plus x plus z over x plus y plus 4xyz over x plus y, y plus z, z plus x is greater than or equal to 2. And if you've seen Nesbitt's inequality, this is stronger. Stronger than Nesbitt. If you don't know Nesbitt, I recommend looking it up. It's fairly a straightforward application of the cauchy schwarz inequality, in particular the Engels form or T2's lemma. For T equals to 2, we have that in a factored form x plus y plus z times x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus 3xyz is greater than or equal to 2 times x squared plus y squared plus z squared times xy plus yz plus zx. So again, that, that's an interesting way of expressing the t equals to 2 form of Schur's inequality, where we have factored forms greater than or equal to each other. And for t equals to 3, we find that there is the following interesting inequality, x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 6xyz divided by x plus y plus z plus x plus y plus z times xyz over x squared plus y squared plus z squared. This is greater than or equal to 2 times xy plus yz 
plus zx. So as you can see, the complexity is increasing, but we're getting interesting and strong inequalities. So I'll stop there with regards to the special cases, and I'll prove that Schur's inequality actually holds. So let me restate for you what Schur says. He says that x to the t, x minus y, x, x minus z, plus y to the t, y minus z, y minus x, plus z to the t, z minus x, z minus y, is greater than or equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression and we're going to, we're going to call this p of x, y, z, since it's a polynomial in x, y, and z. And we, first we noticed that x, y, z are symmetric in p. That means if we switch any two of them, we still have the same algebraic expression. It, it outputs the same number. So what that allows us to do is assume without loss of generality that x is greater than or equal to y is greater than or equal to z. So that's going to be useful for us. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write p of x, y, z in a different form. We're going to write p of x, y, z is equal to we're going to we're basically going to factor out this x minus y and this y minus x so what we get is that x minus y times x to the t x minus z minus y to the t y minus z plus z to the t and now we're going to reorder both of these two. So we get z to the t times x minus z times y minus z. And now it's more or less clear that this is in fact uh, non-negative because this one is true because x is greater than or equal to y. And x, x to the t is greater than or equal to y to the t since x and y are both non-negative and t, t is a non-negative integer and we find that x minus z and y minus z are, can be compared as x minus z is greater than or equal to y minus z because x is greater than or equal to y and over here the z minus t is greater than or equal to zero uh, the x is greater than or equal to z and the y is greater than or equal to z. So this whole thing p of x, y, z is greater than or equal to zero which proves sure. So that completes the proof of Schur's inequality. The last thing that I want to mention is that we can actually find the exact equality case. Equality holds if and only if x equals y equals to z or 2 of x, y, z are equal and the third is 0. So that's the equality case but I'm not going to prove it here because it's actually uh, pretty involved to have to prove it, but it is possible to prove that this this is the equality case. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.